Hello guys and welcome. In today's video I want to talk about Predecessor, a new free-to-play multi multiplayer online battle arena game that has been getting quite popular lately, you know? And what is what is the best thing about Predecessor? It's all these different characters and they have very innovative action combat, right? And the map feels good, the laning feels good. It's not the most innovative game, you know, they're still just, uh, you know, another Dota style game, you know, that they kind of like innovation. They only have one map, you know, um, but they do well what they do, you know, and that's, I think that's what matters and what, what makes this game very good. But in this video, I also want to talk about what is the biggest problem of Predecessor currently. In my opinion, it's the lack of any meaningful progression. And these are almost three points I want to make in this video. How can we make Predecessor even better? The first problem is the lack of any meaningful rank scene and rewards. There is no, uh, there is no rank leaderboard, no rewards yet currently in the game right there are not even uh, maybe there are a few community tournaments but that's it you know we desperately need um, rank functionality with rank leaderboard and rewards so people have something to play forward to you know to be competitive players to compete right that is what makes such games fun you know and another huge issue here is the lack of any cosmetics that we can actually earn and feel good about you know there is literally not a single cosmetic in this game a skin that co you could earn just by playing the game every skin we have currently in the game is you have to pay for it and when you pay for skin for a cosmetic for an achievement it literally has no meaning right this is one of the reasons why i prefer gigantic over uh, predecessor because there are actually set of achievements, uh, fortune cards that you can do, set of hard achievements, so you can earn some of really cool skins in the game. And this actually gives player a uh, meaning, a uh, more sense of progression, right? You know, Predecessor itself is a great game, you have one of the best action combat, you have great maps, you have great laning phase, you have items. But there is literally zero progression in this game and in my opinion that's one of the biggest problems with this game. And everything we're gonna talk about in this video comes back to this problem. Right? <clears throat> no skins, no, no cosmetics to earn by playing the game, no achievements. Uh, no rank leaderboard or rewards by playing the game. You get like almost zero rewards for even winning games. You just get some currency so you can buy new champions. And that's fine, that's okay. I mean, that's literally the only form of progression we have currently in the game that you unlock new champions. But once you do, there's literally no reason to play this game anymore. Why the game is out like few months and we don't have basic functionalities in the game? What are they waiting for? That World of Warcraft catalyst Cataclysm will come out. You know, but I mean that game has many problems. I don't really want to support. Uh, honestly, I don't want to support that company anymore because what they did to Rackful, you know. But let's continue. I think another issue here is that um, there is a lack of social interaction. I think my, in my issue, in my eyes, that's a big problem. Predecessor is so much fun when you play it in, with duos, when you play it in a team, when you have, you know, people talking in discords. But this game itself literally has zero social futures, right? Almost nobody is using chat, there is no voice chat, uh, and, and almost nobody is using voice lines, right? This game barely needs in-game voice chat to be actually considered. To co this game could be, in my opinion, Predecessor could be three times bigger if we only had like in-game voice chat with rank leaderboard rewards, you know, and more more achievements, more achievements, more progression in this game. So you can actually feel good about playing the game and earn and unlock new things, right? I mean, I know the game is free, but that doesn't give you an excuse to have zero progression in your game. I mean, f people will play it, you know, but for a long term, that's really a not good ide idea, you know? But you know, I hope you guys have been enjoying Predecessor. It's been quite I have played quite a few games, you know. I think my favorite role is probably jungle, you know, you you camp, you rotate, you have a lot of presence on lanes. But 
at the end of the day, let's be honest, like, it's still just a Dota 2 Quest, Aka Defend of the Asians, 20 year old outdated game mode, designed around last hitting minions and snowballing. And, you know, this game mode itself was never really meant for esports. The complexity of, of Dota actually came from this, all these convoluted items and recipes we had. That was the hard thing about Dota 2 originally, uh, in Warcraft 3 custom maps, you know, Dota All-Star, 20 year old game mode. That was the hard thing because you never really know which items, which recipes, how to buy them, you know, and there was also insane snowballing and, you know, that was the hard part. But itself, when you, when you realize the game mode is not really made for esports, because who, who, let's be honest, who wanna watch 20 minutes of life hitting? I mean, jungle perspective is really fun. Some roles are really fun in this game, but at the same time, you know, it's still, it's kind of hard to make such thing a uh, esport, you know, especially when once you realize how broken esports itself are. This is, has nothing to do with predecessor, but currently sports and esports are pretty much meaningless and why esports are dying because we have no real tournaments, no real rankings where players would actually earn their spots. They literally can't be called their players, you know, so. Now we have this capitalism society where only 15% of guys on top uh, can make it. So it's either guys who use bots like a promotional accounts all over social media or guys who get handpicked for prolix. So then people think they're one of the be best even though they never were. And that's probably the sole reason why it's years ago. League of Legends, Dota 2, Smite, Esports has been dying now for years. You know? Because this is literally how, how every Smite or League of Legends content creator made their careers. I mean, you can go on Twitch right now and only guys who appear at the top are either guys who got handpicked for Prolix, you know, then people think they are one of the best even though they were, never really were, they never really deserved their spots. I mean, I have no problem with you if you actually deserve it, but most of guys didn't deserve it, they got handpicked, right? Or they use bots, you know, so that's the problem with these sports. Um, But you know, in my opinion, Predator is really fun. You have fun characters, and decent item building. You have many roles you can try, many characters you can try. There are some uh, fun uh, game mechanics like class hitting minions, and the map feels very good and big. Uh, you have many tactics you can push. Minions feel very important. Uh, they are all about pressure, you know. Um, even though you have some characters which which are almost feels broken, you know. Um, but I, in my opinion, Predator could be three times bigger if you only had like more social interaction, like uh, voice chat, push to talk voice chat or open voice chat, or if you had actually had leaderboard and rewards, or maybe even more maps. Like we currently literally only have one map. I know, I know you guys think that Dota, Aka Conquest, Aka Defense of the Asians is the origins of MOBA games. But it never really was. Dota was just one of countless of community-made maps. The true origins of MOBA genre, multiplayer online battle arena, is countless of community-made maps. F fight of characters on different fun maps by different community-made maps. And MOBA studios that still only have one map and think, think that Dota, Aka Conquest is so much more competitive than everything else, they never really understood how the game mode is designed. The game itself, game mode itself has many issues. Snowballing, less hitting, 20 minutes of less hitting, who wanna watch that for esports, right? Um, you, you always have to abuse meta items or you fall behind. So there is literally no counter building, uh, barely no depth. There, the game, game of itself has many these own flows, you know? But people who never really played Warcraft 3 or have any real experience in MOBA genre, I really don't know that. In my opinion, Arena is actually the biggest open niche currently in the market because most MOBA studios, they only cater to Dota Conquest fans and ignore everybody else. That's why if Smite, we had Arena, we had ranked leaderboard rewards for Smite, but they removed it for the same reason because they have this outdated mentality that only Conquest Dota is competitive, so they ignore most of their player base. That's why Arena is the biggest open niche. If you just make good action combat Arena style map with ranked leaderboard rewards, Words, with a good social system, like you can be the most popular mobile on the market, you know, because most of these studios are totally outdated and they don't even understand the true origins of mobile genre. So, let me know what you guys think in this video, and I hope you see you in the next one. Peace. <laughs> I'm tired now.